What is it that you remember most about this extraordinary individual and the impact he had on your life? Well, John was the inspiration for me going into space, actually. I mean, it was literally reading the day after his orbital mission uh, about his flight that inspired me to really commit to trying to become an astronaut. And luckily I made it, but I mean, it was literally John's, John and John's flight that uh, were my inspiration for becoming an astronaut. You know, his accomplishments uh, certainly so many, uh, but when we take a look at that moment in time, at the time when we were in the midst of the space race, uh, it was fueled by the Cold War with the Soviets, and there was a perception that the United States was not going to really fare well in the competition. He really shattered that myth and truly put America on the map. We did. I mean, uh, it's hard for people to remember back at, to those times, even people my age. Uh, but America was in the dumps. I mean, we were psychologically uh, underwater with the Soviet Union having launched the first satellite into space, uh, the first dogs into space, the first man into space, the first woman into space. I mean, the United States was, uh, you know, thought of itself as the epitome of science and technology, and yet here we were, uh, way behind. And John really made the big difference. Uh, uh, Alan Shepard and, and Gus Grissom flew before, but John was the first American to actually orbit the Earth, and he came back uh, a hero. He was a hero before he left, but when he came back, he was probably the greatest non-political hero that the United States had. You know, and as far as that hero status is concerned, as I understand it, John F. Kennedy uh, did not want him to go back into space because he didn't want anything to happen to right. him, that he wanted him to remain the heroic icon for America because he symbolized so much. And uh, according to reports that I've read, John Glenn didn't know this until years later because he really wanted <laughs> to get back into space as, as soon as he, uh, you know, landed back on Earth after that first mission. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a real irony, isn't it, that you, you, you become a hero by flying in space and at the same time the, the side effect is that you can't do it again because you're too valuable now. That's a, it's a real irony. But, it, you know, those kinds of ironies occurred, it happened with Neil Armstrong to a certain extent as well. I guess it was when John, um, after he'd served 24 years or almost 24 years as a senator that um, we, we decided he became expendable again and sent him up. <laughs> Yes, exactly, because he became the oldest uh, man to be an astronaut to go into space. And he even had to lobby right. for that uh, position for quite a while. It took a couple of years to convince NASA that he was well, ready he and willing to do it. Well, it was not only convincing NASA, but he, in a way, John had to convince himself, too. It was typical of John that it wasn't just putting John Glenn, national hero, back up into space. But John had to make it that we were going to learn a lot about geriatrics in space and things of that kind. So, uh, you know, to the very end, John, uh, there had to be a real uh, higher purpose for him flying than simply that John Glenn wanted to fly again in space. Indeed. And I know he came from very humble roots and growing up uh, in Ohio there. Um, a lot of folks consistently say that he never put on airs, no matter how famous he became, that it was not in his yeah. DNA to do so. Uh, and that his father apparently inspired John Glenn to uh, fly after they saw a barnstormer in a field and his dad took him up on that flight. And from then on, it was just magic. It was a love affair that lasted yeah. all of his life. Yeah, John was a pilot's pilot uh, before he became an astronaut. I mean, he had set the first transcontinental speed record uh, supersonic flight in, in an F-8. I mean, that, he, he was already uh, a hero. And he became a very close personal friend of mine. And even more than John, I think Annie Glenn was one of my favorites of the whole time in the space program. Annie was just a wonderful, strong woman, and all of us loved her.
talk about that relationship for a moment because we've heard the stories that they actually met uh, <laughs> while they were babies playing in the same playpen because the families knew each other and then they actually became more serious once they were in school and childhood sweethearts like that and all the way through college and then they got married after he served um, as a pilot in the war. Uh, why, what was it about that relationship that endured and, was, and made it so special from your point of view? Well, uh, you know, Charlie Bolden, you want to ask him about that. Charlie made a wonderful statement that if anybody's looking for a model in terms of a successful and a wonderful marriage, you know, you want to look at John and Annie Glenn. Uh, they were just a wonderful, deeply in love couple. Um, and both of them were, I mean, John was a gentleman in the old school sense of the word. And Andy, Annie was a lady. Uh, they were just uh, Mr. and Mrs. America. And at the same time, uh, Annie, despite her handicap of having a, a very difficult stutter, uh, worked all her life to overcome it and did. But Annie, in spite of the stutter, was a very strong woman. And John supported her all the way, including when she had a little set to with Vice President Lyndon Johnson one day you may have heard about. Indeed, you can tell our audience about that story. Yeah, well, that was uh, John, one of the several attempts at launching John before he actually went up uh, was underway and weather was a real problem and they were going to have to cancel the, the mission and it was very anxious whether or not he was going to go. And the vice president was down in Houston and wanted to drop in on Annie Glenn, um, you know, to speak with her and frankly to get on television. And uh, he, he parked uh, his vehicle a couple of blocks away from their house and, and it kept calling and, and Annie Glenn kept saying, no, uh, I am not <laughs> interested in having the vice president visit. Uh, it's a personal time. And this happened several times until finally they called uh, the vice president, had NASA call down to the Cape to John and tell him that Annie wasn't cooperating and could he help out and John said absolutely not <laughs> Annie doesn't want the vice president he's not going to go there she was the boss on that one